So today we're going to be talking to the ladies of LinkedIn. Yeah, these are all female LinkedIn experts, some that actually work right there at the company headquarters here in San Francisco where I'm located. I have some great tips from these women and they're going to explain to us why we should be on LinkedIn. I don't know about you. I've been on LinkedIn for over 10 years and sometimes I have no idea why. Their website uh, has all kinds of features apparently. If you dig down under there, there's groups and there's you know, resume pages and there's connections and in mail and all kinds of arcane stuff. And there's even a special program we're going to find out for uh, veterans. So anybody who wants to know about LinkedIn could benefit from listening today. There's going to be tips on not only how to find a job and network in your career, etc., cetera, et cetera. This is a way to spread your entrepreneurial vision literally worldwide. That's what they tell me. Now, the next voice you're going to hear is that of barrier based LinkedIn consultant, Christine Huber. She has the distinction of being, um, I think, the LinkedIn number one all time top female expert on social networking through LinkedIn. And her profile is in the top 1% of all LinkedIn profiles ever viewed. So let's let her give us some insights. Really quickly, she has uh, five minutes here and she will give us uh, a wealth of information that can help you in your business networking and uh, developing contacts that can help you in your career. You will be able in five minutes a day to get business from LinkedIn. So I know that sounds like kind of not doable, but I have a system and I'll share it with you really fast. So the first thing you want to do on LinkedIn is look at your profile and you want to maximize your use of keywords. So if you're, um, uh, if you're in software sales, for example, you know, have that everywhere in your profile, you know, whatever your keyword is as much as possible, put that in your profile, in your headline, and then secret two is drive traffic from your profile to your website so that you're getting the interactions off of LinkedIn. And so you can then control what the messaging is. So that's one of, <laughs> that's one of, one of my top tips. Um, the second, second thing you want to do is you want to use updates on LinkedIn because people, people read them. It's like the Facebook home feed. And you want to have a strategy for posting your updates on LinkedIn. What I do, what I recommend to my clients is that they post four updates a day, which sounds like a lot, but it's, um, you know, one update is personal to differentiate yourself. Another update is an industry update, which can be like a blog post that you've written. Um, the third update would be promotional and then the fourth update would be something inspirational or motivational and you space though I have tools that I use to space those out throughout the day so it's not like you know your contacts are receiving five updates you know in two minutes which is highly annoying so that's updates um, the third thing you want to do to get better results from LinkedIn and you can you can still this is all doable in five minutes a day when you use my system and my tools the third thing you want to do is use groups on LinkedIn and share your expertise in groups so wherever your ideal clients are you want to join those groups and share your, for instance, share your blog article that you write. Ideally, you write a, an article once a week or, you know, on a, on a regular basis to get your expertise and share your message and get it out to your ideal clients. So there are tools that you can use to share your article with LinkedIn groups. And I recommend to my clients that they join 50 groups. That's the maximum. But it's very easy to do because it's just one click of a button and boom, your content goes out to those 50 groups. And depending on the groups that you belong to, that can be just incredible. You can have an incredible reach. So 
Again, the three ways that you can get clients or get better results from LinkedIn is maximize your profile, use updates strategically and, and effectively, and use groups to share your expertise. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Christine Huber can be found on the web at her own website, christinehuber.com, H-U-E-B-E-R is her last name. And she is literally LinkedIn's all-time top number one female expert on the subject of social networking and business development through LinkedIn. Now, she doesn't work for LinkedIn directly. So I decided, I think we need to hear from some people that actually work inside the core operating team of LinkedIn, provide us some insights, you know, on how to develop a, a profile, how to really get down to the, the brass tacks, the basics. Christine has some great networking and, you know, client developing uh, tips there. And that's what she does. She mentors people. You can order materials on her website on how to do just that. And I think some of us just need to get our foot in the door with an employer and are just looking for ways to optimize our profiles to even just get hired or do real basic LinkedIn profile maintenance, things that can help us just as individuals. Let's get Christina Hall on who is uh, somebody who works at LinkedIn and can give us some background on the company. And then we'll get into some of the basic networking and profile tips that could be handy for anyone using LinkedIn as a platform to develop their own career. Um, I'm Christina and um, I, I assume all of you are pretty familiar with LinkedIn, um, but I'll just give you a little bit of, of the business background. Um, we're the world's largest uh, professional network. We have over 313 million members. Um, we were founded in 2003. So though the company is sort of a newer company in some ways, we've actually been around quite a while. In terms of, as a business, we have three main product lines. You guys probably think the most about LTS, our talent solutions product, which um, is a recruiter um, type product. Um, we also have LSS, LinkedIn Sales Solutions, which is a way that um, people can use LinkedIn to more uh, accurately pinpoint direct sales customers. And we have LMS, LinkedIn Marketing Solutions, which is a B2B platform, so for advertising, for example. Um, and then additionally, we have you know user revenue from people who buy premium subscriptions, things like that. So one of the things I'm going to talk about when we get to my job is the culture at LinkedIn um, because we try and really strive to make it a place where people want to work and where people would want to come in addition to a place that people want to join as a professional networking site. So our culture is focused on sort of some main sort of tenants, results, collaboration, humor, integrity, and transformation. And transformation is sort of a really big part of what people talk about a lot at the company because um, an element of the underlying concept about LinkedIn is that you can use LinkedIn to transform your professional world, whether that's a new job or a new career or new connections. So that transformation piece is really important to us. In terms of how we sort of approach things, we have um, six values as a company. Those, those values are members first, so the, the users are really who we're thinking of first and foremost, and that's our first value. Relationships matter, and I think that'll come up as we talk about networking a little bit. Um, as you think about you know, approaching your job search, I think relationships matter may sound a little fuzzy for a professional network, but I think it can't be discounted. As an employer, we want to be open, honest, and constructive. We demand excellence. We take intelligent risk, and that's uh, important sort of in working with the legal department. I know they're always thinking about that. And finally, our last uh, value is act like an owner. So everyone within the company is sort of empowered to think through the decisions they're making, whether it's whether they take a taxi here or Uber, or whether it's you know um, how they might allocate stock, for example. So um, that's a little bit about the company itself. Thank you for that background information on the company culture, uh, where LinkedIn is coming from, and how it is a tool 
that could help us in our, our job seeking. As listeners, we're interested in improving our personal listings, getting our profiles in the search feature, getting the metadata in there. Having insiders like you, Christina, Nicolette Novak, Michelle Young here who work at LinkedIn, could you give us any other tips on places we could make sure we're putting the right information? There's a summary section and it's above your quote unquote resume and skills. A lot of people don't know that we have a summary section. It goes below your photo and your headline. Um, so if you, especially if you're looking for a job, you should have a summary. It should be, it's kind of outdated now on paper resumes, but you can put your objective there. You know, second year law student seeking second summer internship. These are the classes I have taken. These are the skills. I am passionate about this. Having an objective line in there without using the word, this is my objective, is really important because it adds a nice full picture to your skills. And especially if your resume is not maybe very linear, like it doesn't it doesn't progress from one job to another, like and you have one job that's something you did in high school that's, you know, retail and then you had position post college and then maybe you did something your first summer or something different your second summer, you want to make that a cohesive statement and see how that adds up for someone who's looking at your resume because all your jobs might not necessarily be in the same field or at the same firm or um, so you want that cohesive look and people want something show off your skills like I won this award and I hope and I think this is going to make me a better candidate for. And I would think that, you know, when, when you think about what people see when they first click onto your profile, they see kind of your profile, you know, your headline, and then they'll see the summary. And so when you want something to jump out, you want to kind of highlight, I think, what you want people to see. Because people can kind of scroll through, and when people look at job experience and whatever, I, you know, I kind of feel like words tend to blend together, and, and people, you know, have pretty traditional, you know, it's like if your career path is traditional, it, it may just be kind of cut and dry, and so it's your opportunity to kind of... Um, write something, something about yourself that you want someone to see immediately because it's kind of at the top. It's like when you think about, you know, when you're drafting emails and, you know, you always kind of want the important things kind of top of line. And so when you're thinking about what to write there, I would kind of just, you know, it, it's not meant to be super long because I think you, you want to keep it short and sweet, but it's, you know, it's kind of like your two minute elevator pitch, right? It's like, what would you say about yourself in, in a few sentences? And, and, and I think that you want to make sure that you know who your audience is, depending on what kind of position you're applying for. Like, if you're applying for a marketing type position, right, you might want to be a little bit more creative, right? And so, kind of think about your audience and who you're trying to target um, as you're, you know, depending on how you want to use LinkedIn. I guess I would recommend thinking about really who your general audience is. You don't necessarily, you can't tailor it, you know, by person, right? It's kind of your public profile. And um, I'd recommend, you know, number one, it's like if, if, if you are looking for something, I would kind of take the time to think about what you really want to do because I think, you know, you kind of want to target that. I think when you cast your net too broadly, you're not really going to catch anything, right? And so... You do, you know, it is a good forcing mechanism maybe to kind of think about what you really want your focus to be or kind of what you want your outward kind of profile to be. The one thing that's kind of nice about it being online is you can also change it whenever you want. Yeah. So like if you have an interview with, you know, LinkedIn tomorrow and, you know, you know people are going to be looking at it now, you could change that summary and then, you know, if next week you're going somewhere else, you can you can go ahead and make some of those switches. I mean, yes, people might go back and look at it again and they see something different, and then change it again if you decide you're going to make it a, you know a, a switch. Yeah, that's good. You can change it all the time. <laughs> that's good food for thought on building profiles, coming up with ways to optimize those profiles for potential employers. What are ways to connect with those employers? How would one find connections on LinkedIn that are going to be worthwhile through uh, tools that are available on the site? Could you explain that a little? You can do searches. I'll just give you insight. I work on the jobs team with the jobs engineers. And so I know this page inside and out. Um, I would really tailor your search to one location. It'll give you much better search results because 
this, as you can see in this screenshot, is giving you results in Indianapolis, Texas, Ohio. I would first and foremost tailor it down by location, and you can do it a wide range. If you're willing to work anywhere in the Bay Area, you can put up to 50 miles away from your current zip code. Um, San Francisco Bay Area is a thing you can do. Um, or other regions, right? Like you can do all of New York or all of Chicago or all of an area. It doesn't have to be a specific city or even a specific zip code. So I would do that. And then tailor, you know, you can use the word internships. Sometimes companies don't post it under the word legal. So you can search different, like you can search legal internships as one, search legal as another, um, just internships on their own. So now I think these are some search hacks that I know um, and that'll give you more It'll give you more results and different results on each search. What um, specifically are good networking tips? What is some etiquette that we could uh, take under advisement when it comes to creating connections on LinkedIn or extending invitations to others? So LinkedIn, you know, you have like in-mail, right? I, I, and I, maybe it's only for premium members, and I'm not sure, but you have the ability to email members through LinkedIn, and you know, there's no guarantee that you'll receive a response. Yeah, if you just click, you know, you want to connect with yeah. someone, I would say not, not entirely cold, because if you're mm -hmm. clicking, like, I want to connect with Christina Hall, I would, like, I don't know who you are, right? And so my first thought is, okay, I, I only want to connect with someone that I have some sense of how we are connected or that I might want to connect with later. And so I'm a ton more likely to accept an invite from someone I don't know if they explain why they're contacting me. And there's a whole section for that. There's a whole section when you could connect to write a note. I would recommend never sending a connection to someone you don't know without a note explaining how you're connected. You know, I saw your page. I'm very interested in your work at XYZ Law Firm or ABC Company. Um, I, if you have a moment, I would love to chat briefly more about you, um, or yeah. more with yeah. you, and I would love to connect. And yeah. then maybe you can include your email if they would like to, if they want to email you back, or if they write you back, you can see how you can exchange there. And obviously there's no guarantee that anyone will respond, but I would never leave the line blank because people get requests and then they're like, well, this is odd. And then it feels unprofessional. Like, And, and it's gonna sit in, even if, so even if the person says no, it's still gonna probably sit somewhere in their inbox. So if you go back to it later, you, you're gonna begin to have like made it clear what's going on. The one exception where you don't, I think, have to worry about writing a whole thing is if you actually really know someone. Oh, yeah. Like I work with Michelle exactly. all the time. I don't even know if we're connected. I would yeah. bet we are. But if I send, if I pull, if she comes up on my feed, I'm just gonna click on that because because yeah. we work together enough that she's gonna be like, oh, Christina, I saw her at that meeting yesterday. Boom. So no need to waste your time on that. Yeah. Like it's not bad form then, but especially when it's someone you don't actually know. Yeah, and we can talk about that more uh, when yeah. we talk about yeah, networking and research. Yeah. Well, well, speaking of people you don't know, I find when I'm using LinkedIn, I really don't want people I don't know to know that I'm looking at their profiles. And the privacy settings have to be kept locked down somewhat so that people don't know that you've looked at their profile Perhaps you have a job interview coming up, you're checking these uh, prospective employers out, and they're potentially going to get a notification that you're trolling around on their profile. So I, 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 I'm not a big fan of that feature. I, I try to keep my stuff, you know, so that they wouldn't necessarily know it was me, but there's not a lot of ways you can prevent that. What, what is your opinion on that feature? Do you think that's something that you want the prospective employer to know you're looking at their profile. How do you see that and the role of that in the uh, process on LinkedIn? I mean, I think that, that it, it's person to person specific. You can put your search on private so people can't tell if you searched them or not. I don't know that um, as, as someone who would be interviewing, I guess I don't know that I would look to see whether or not a person has researched me. I'd be able to kind of tell when you're, you know, when you're interviewing and I think your experience will come out. I think what it matters is if the person is really able to highlight something that they saw about you that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise have known. And I think that shows kind of your interest in the job and interest in the position when you use LinkedIn as a way to research the companies that you're working for as well as the people. I think that, that that'll come through in your interview, kind of how diligent you've been. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it's all part part of the, you know, sort of principle about these things to begin with, which it, it's, 
I think, much more compelling when you have a candidate who's interested in the job. Mm -hmm. So if when you show up for the interview, you show you're interested in the firm and the people, you know, to the extent that you can convey that because of the research you've done, that's awesome. I, I don't know that I would necessarily have time to check yeah. and see, okay, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet with this person and did he or she look me up? I know everyone's got one of these. Like, this is not, we're not talking about a long yeah. process. We're, I'm talking about five minutes in the parking lot. You know, and if you convey that you've done that bit of research, I think that's still better than the person who did have mm -hmm. and, and also using LinkedIn again to research the companies. I think a lot of companies have their own company pages where they talk about their own initiatives, right? And so if you talk more about you know, the immediate job description and why you want to work for the company in general. Like LinkedIn, I think we have our values that, that are extremely important to us. And if you convey, you know, that you share those same values in the interview, I think it goes a lot further than if, if you didn't. Um, because again, you know, we are focused on culture and making sure that, you know, we want to hire really smart, bright people, but we also want people who um, will fit in with our culture. We know that LinkedIn is available for pretty much anybody with uh, internet access. There's a mobile version for your phone that can come in handy. Is I heard there's something, uh, a special product you guys have rolled out to help returning veterans and military members integrate back into the private sector. Can anybody speak to that? This year we rolled out a big uh, initiative on our end and it's twofold first of all we're doing um, we're giving all veterans a year of LinkedIn premium for free which that allows you to send things like in mails and see who's viewed your profile and can obviously change your settings to see if they can see who's viewed yours you can see stats in like if you're applying for a job LinkedIn has this algorithm that gives you a percentage of what you look like compared to other candidates. There's a lot of perks for having this and it's a pretty expensive service. So having it a year for free, especially when you're actively like seeking a job, I think is really valuable. The second part of LinkedIn's veteran part of LinkedIn's veterans initiative is the LinkedIn Mentor Network. That is a group on LinkedIn. I think it's private, so you have to request membership and they might do a little bit of background to make sure you're actually a veteran. Within it, anyone who's already a part of that group wants to be in that group. And so you should reach out to people that are in the field that you want to work in um, because they want to help. That's the reason they joined the group. And so you are they're more likely to respond to you and give you advice and you obviously share a very big life experience together. So there's already this common ground between all of you. And so it's I think it's a really great group to join and and to utilize, especially in your job search, because LinkedIn's making a big push along their partnering in the government of putting veterans to work. So on Veterans Day, Michelle Obama mentioned LinkedIn in her speech about how we are trying to put more veterans to work and getting them jobs and getting them access to jobs. So it's a big initiative we're working on. Just search Veterans Mentor Network LinkedIn. You can search it on Google or in the LinkedIn search box, but the link is veterans.linkedin.com. And so that will get you started for your job seeker for free and um, a link to join the Mentor Network. Well, that is a great program uh, available to military veterans. I hope the listeners of this podcast will reach out and tell any people they know who recently left the military about that so we can get veterans uh, to take full advantage of the LinkedIn feature set. Um, is there anything else you could share with us about research and networking through LinkedIn and then summarize uh, some of the ways to go about that on the site? We'd appreciate that. So um, networking and, and research, I think that, um, I mean, I think that LinkedIn itself in terms of using it as a job search tool is a pretty powerful tool. I used it a lot when I was um, doing my job search. And I think kind of a couple of tips is, you know, connect with people that you meet. I think you know, it's much easier, um, you know, if you're at a networking event to connect with them on LinkedIn than it would be, for example, Facebook, right? It's, Facebook is more social, but LinkedIn is more professional. And I think, you know, if, if you meet people in a professional setting it's um, and, and you've talked to them, I think that it's, it's easy to reach out on LinkedIn and kind of keep the connection warm. And I think kind of helpful things to do after you connect with them is maybe send a note. Um, you know, if you're interested in what they do, you can send them a note to meet for coffee and whatnot. But um, I think that, that you never know how a connection is going to um, come in handy, whether or not you can help them or they help you, but it's paying it forward, right? And I just feel like there are so many different ways that I've, I've used LinkedIn. And I've had, you know, people reach out to me to say, you know, I see you're connected to this other person at this other place. Can you introduce me? And I've, I've I, you know, I've, I've done that in the past too. So I think that, you know, you shouldn't discount 
um, the value of, of connections. And again, it's kind of, you know, one of our values is you know, relationships matter. And so I think um, it's a really easy way to, to stay kind of in contact. Again, leverage online connection to in-person interaction. You know, it's like once you connect with them, just say, hey, it was great meeting you. You know, it was, you know, can we meet and talk about your experience doing X, Y, and Z? And I think that, um, you know, it's, it's much easier, even when you're networking, I think, to, to meet and talk with someone for five minutes, connect with them on LinkedIn, and actually have a bigger discussion. Um, it doesn't all have to be done kind of at that time. It's, it's really useful in, in researching, um, you know, whether if you're applying for a job or if you're interviewing, I think it's a really helpful tool. I think that, you know, you can use the jobs board to look for jobs, but once you find a job, I think, and, and you know your lineup of interviews, you can research people and see what their experience have been. And, but as you're doing your, your job search, I think, and, and interviewing, I think it's really helpful to look at people's LinkedIn profiles and see what their experience has been. And, you know, you can leverage off of that in your discussions, right? It can be more about just kind of, you know, just professional experience. And if you see other things in common, it's just an easier way for people to get to know you. So I think, you know, and, and when you think about it from that perspective, you also want to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is complete, too. Well, there you have it. Great tips from the ladies of LinkedIn. These include keeping your profile fully filled out and up to date, using a great business like Photograph, connecting with others through the groups and networking features on LinkedIn, just how to extend your reach, whether you're seeking a job or clientele. We first heard from Christine Huber, who is a LinkedIn consultant and mentor in the San Francisco Bay Area, has one of the top LinkedIn profiles and really helps coach people on that. Look her up if you're more interested. And we also heard directly from employees at LinkedIn. The first employee we heard from was Christina Hall, who works at LinkedIn. We also heard from her colleagues, Nicolette Novak and Michelle LeYoung, who all provided valuable insights. And I appreciate them sharing so that we could all listen to what they had to say. I don't know if I'm 100% convinced, maybe my jury is still out, but I definitely appreciated hearing their tips and I will try some of those out and see how they go. It's great to uh, just to know. And I think everybody who listened today benefited in some way. Random Revelations always has something interesting on the radar. I just never know what it's going to be. So until we meet again, check out our archives, listen to our previous recordings. There's probably something in there that you don't even know about that might be of interest to you. Please send us a note if you get a chance or subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Look forward to you hearing us again in the future and send a suggestion if there's something you'd like to have us talk about on the show. Take care out there and don't do anything I would.